All right, we're here in Georgia, and uh, came down here. Uh, Best Dad's not doing too good. We're coming down here to Georgia to uh, visit, and while we was down here, we uh, stopped by my mother-in-law's house. You know, visit with her a bit and fellowship a little bit, and we picked up uh, a chicken tractor. Let me show you. All right, this is gonna be my new chicken tractor. My mother-in-law built her a nice chicken coop. I'm gonna bring you back there in a minute and show you what it looks like, but it's just awesome. So I'm gonna be putting my Americanas up in this one. I've been looking for something to put them in. It's got a nesting box built in already. And it's got an enclosed cage. It's even got wire on the bottom to keep the keep them from uh, something digging in there. So just wanna show you our new thing. And I'll be, when we roll it out, the birds in it, I'll show you what that looks like. Let me walk you down here to the back and show you what's going on back down here. They got a beautiful little place here. Lots of room, but she uh, used to grow a pretty decent sized garden, but she just uh, she just don't have the she didn't have the want to for a while. But I think I, I think me and Beth fired her up about growing a garden. See, they're down there loading the rooster into the that chicken house down there. But she even put herself a little garden in here this year with some uh, cinder blocks and some blocks. And uh, she come down, come down here and grow some tomatoes. You know, you want to come do a tour with me? Come talk, talk to us about your vegetables. This is my mother-in-law, Lenora. Hi, how are you? And we're gonna. She gonna let you talk about. She gonna talk about her garden. This is my first year for a little raised garden, and with the direction of Beth and Ken, and I got some uh, cucumbers, got some onions, got a few little peppers, got some squash plants in the outer block, mm -hmm. and of course my tomato plants that are doing real good. The job that you get it started, then you can go year to year, and these are my potato potato plants that I started and they're doing good, 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 good. So I don't know how many I'm going to get, but we'll see. You'll probably get a fair amount out of that. And I started my cantaloupe seeds and I'll have to thin them oh, out wow. and put them Look somewhere that. else. So I just made like a little mound in an old swimming pool and part of a trash can and put my dirt in right. it and they're doing real good. Hadn't been out for like three weeks. So like I've been telling y'all, this is, this is a testament again that you can grow anything. You don't need a lot of space. I mean, you got you got her cantaloupes in here. That's going to get thinned out, but that's going to produce a lot. And then the tomatoes, you got one, two, three, four, five, six tomatoes, which is going to produce a tremendous amount of food for her and my father-in-law. And the potatoes, don't think these buckets are too small because I saw a gentleman on YouTube that actually grows his potatoes in little trash cans, you know, little ones like you get it to, like you put in your bathroom. And he got... Uh, six or ten potatoes out of each one of them box out of them buckets. So, you know, you get you know figure if you get six times four, twenty four potatoes, you know, that'd do you pretty good. And it doesn't take a lot of space. I mean, look how small this little little space is, and how much food that she's gonna grow right in this little space. I mean, this is gonna be awesome, and I'm I'm grateful that I could uh, share some knowledge with her. All right, let me bring you over here and show you this awesome chicken coop she's got because she gave me. See, it's not just about me. It's about finding new ideas, and she's gonna. She got me thinking about maybe doing this on my chicken yard too. So what she got? This whole thing's enclosed. So if you look real close inside there, there's a old eight by eight building in there, and they just took that and put that in as their the house for them. They got a little ramp for them to go in and out, so it's not too hard for them to get in and out of there. They got a brooding area back in the back where you can brood your chicks, and then you just open it up and let them on out. And they got all this room to move around without having to worry about them getting getting predators in here. So this thing is awesome. And I think I'm probably gonna end up doing something like this on our homestead. Because I like the I like the, the design of this and, and then we, we can keep our we concreted around the foundation too. Predators are getting in. Oh, I didn't even know that. So mm -hmm. so concreted all the way around. That's pretty awesome. And uh right now, I mean right now I'm doing my brooders in the barn where I put the where I built those stalls, but 
I'd a whole lot rather have a place that's right here by the chickens so they're already acclimatized to the chickens and ready to go so it's not such a shock for them when you introduce new chickens into the flock. But I wanted to show you that and show you what uh, she's got around her homestead. So uh, look at that. Look at all them dandelions growing up in there. You know what I'm thinking about all them dandelions? Dandelion tea. It's not weeds. That is dandelion tea. And if you've never had dandelion tea, you need to try it. Because it is one of the best medicinal things you can have for colds. And it just tastes good too, believe it or not. This is uh, her dog pen. She's got a beautiful old brown dog here. What's her, what's her name? Riley. Riley. Yep, he's yep, sitting down there in the house, just chilling. Well, I didn't want to miss it all, but I want to show y'all Beth's uh, doctor and this rooster. I must call, start calling her Dr. Chicken Beth. Yeah. Oh. Uh, and I was going to show you, well, he's getting a little bit riled up now, but I was going to show you this, uh, how calm this rooster's been. So what she had to do is she had to get in here to his foot. He had Bumblefoot all the way up into the pad where she's squeezing right now. And uh, she got most of it out so far. You can see it all down there. But he had, he had Bumblefoot real bad. And I think she's pretty much got all the what's in this one out of it. And I just want to show you how, all, I mean, I, I told her I ain't seen a rooster be this calm ever, squeezing on his or... foot, you know, very well, just holding on to him. And we just put his, you saw we just had his foot in a, uh, in a uh, Warm soak, and he was standing there like his a, a sauna, like he was at the spa. So, I just wanted to show you that, and I think she's got, you got one more to go, Beth? You still got to do the other foot, or you already done it? Okay. Well, we're down here in Georgia visiting and visiting with their, my, my mother in law. And we're just having a great day out here. So I just want to show you that. She, uh, and uh, we'll be putting this up pretty soon. Bye. Hey, y'all. Um, we stopped by my mom's while we were in Georgia and we got this cute little. Rooster here, his name is Ruru, and if Kim wants to zero in, he had Bumblefoot, so we operated on his foot. I got the, that's infection in there right now. I've got it packed with Neosporin, and we got the corns out, as you can see. Most of it is down here on the floor. You see, and on the way up here, I'll keep it at it. But as you can see, his toenails go a little bit long. He lost his toenail here. And then he lost it here. But we got him under, we got him, we took care of him. We put him on the men and we're going to finish him off here, get him off. His toenails are bleeding because the infection on his toe, but we're going to get him all fixed up. Stop him bleeding and we're going to put him in the back of the coop. And we're going to check on him tomorrow. And I believe he's going to be good. He uh, was a really good rooster. He didn't stop me. You could tell. Good patient. Yeah. And my mom has been training roosters for a while, and but she's never come across this problem. And she thought that he just got bit on the foot like by a bee or something. But he didn't. He had bumble foot. So we let them take care of it. And cut the toenails, even though the toenails started bleeding. That's just infection in the foot. But he's doing good. But y'all don't be scared of your roosters. Your roosters are like your hens. They want your attention and don't be scared of them. They all right. You'll never know how they'll love you for getting after a bumble, a corn in their foot. But anyway, thanks for watching. Let's clean them up. All right, well, I thank y'all for joining us today. We had some fun on the home, on, on the, this homestead, and Beth did a great job cleaning that rooster up because it was, he was in bad shape. I was wondering if we might have to, might have to take his foot, but, you know, 
she just she just got a way with healing animals and it's awesome that she can uh just get the you know get her mind going and figure out how to fix that that bird because now the bird's gonna live a much better life by having to hobble around on that bad foot and i i'm grateful for her being on the homestead helping me she's not just only my wife but she's my partner and she does a great job so remember to subscribe and if you like this video give us a thumbs up and remember ring the notification bell so you can see we put new videos up but always remember god is good all the time and all the time god is good god bless y'all love you